Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the REST APIs, how you can use those with the Power BI service, sprinkle a little bit of PowerShell on it, and also look at some cool tricks that you can do from an admin perspective. A Little bit of something for everyone. Stay tuned. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, REST APIs. Oh, that term is really scary, or you may not even know what it is. So an API is a way that I can programmatically interact with something, right? In this case, we're talking about the Power BI service. These REST APIs, think of this as a web page that I can hit that will actually return things to me. So I can give it parameters, I can give it options, and then it will return some sort of data, typically in a JSON format. That's what a REST API is. Again, sounds really, really scary, but we can use those to do some amazing things with Power BI. And what I wanna look at in this video is how you can use those REST APIs without writing any code and then take it to the next level with PowerShell. All right, enough of all this talking, let's head over to my laptop and see what this looks like. All right, we are starting off at the actual reference documentation for the Power BI REST APIs. This lists everything that's possible with the REST APIs. These get updated every once in a while. And so you can see I can do things with reports, I can do things with groups, which are workspaces, app workspaces. I can do things with gateways, data sets, data flows, capacities, so on and so forth. Now I've also got this section for admin. So if you're an admin or you're Power BI tenant, then you can go through and do some things that go beyond just what you have access to. We'll come back to that in a second. All right, so let's take a look at an example of what we can do here. So in this example, what I wanna do is I wanna get a list of reports from a given app workspace. So I can come in to get reports in group. So again, this is getting the reports from an app workspace. You'll see the URL that I need to do, and there's one parameter there called group ID, which is listed, that I need to supply. So I need the ID of the app workspace, and then give me the reports that are inside of that. And if you scroll down, there's some examples of what the URL would look like and then what the response is. So you can go and programmatically go against that. The cool thing here that was added not too long ago is this try it button. So if we click that, we're gonna go and sign in with our Power BI account. And then what it's gonna do is it has that URL. This is the format of the URL. This is the parameter that I'm gonna pass in. So I'm gonna pass in my group ID and then you'll see the URL down below. Right now I don't have it supplied. So of course you're asking Adam, where do I get that workspace ID or group ID? And the easy way to do it, again, if you don't wanna write any code, there are APIs to go discover that, but we'll go over to Power BI, I'll come into workspaces, we'll come down to my given app workspace, and then I will get that URL off of, or I'll get the ID off of the URL, All right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's go ahead and supply that in. All right, and then what you see down below is that ID is now populated into the URL. Very cool. It will go and run it. Bam, there's my reports, right? These are all the reports that are in that app workspace. Life is good. All right, let's take this to the next level and say, maybe I've got some ETL process that I'm doing. I'm populating my data warehouse, and once that data warehouse is done, I wanna do some DevOps where I'm gonna actually signal to refresh the data set inside of Power BI to populate that because I know that the data warehouse is now done with what it needs to do. So let's go over to data sets and we'll come down to there is an API to refresh. So we're gonna refresh a data set in a group. All right, cool. So this one takes two parameters. This takes the group ID, the workspace ID, and the data set ID. So we've already got our group ID. So how do we get our data set ID? So if we come into sales group, we're gonna go into data sets, gonna find the data set that we want come into settings and bam, I'm gonna come in and grab our data set ID, copy that, come back in, we'll hit try it. All right, we're gonna pass in our data set ID and then we need to come back and get our group ID again. All right, and if we scroll down, we can see, uh, you can also pass in some options as far as what to do with that data set uh, in terms of how to be notified, but we're not gonna do that for this example. And then the URL was populated with my data set ID and my group ID, and it is a post. So let's go and run that. 202, bam. My, my data set is now refreshing at the end of my ETL process. 
And you're like, Adam, wait a second. That doesn't make sense because we just did it in a web page. That's not part of my ETL process. That's where you can take this and use PowerShell. So from a PowerShell perspective, we have the Power BI PowerShell commandlets. And if we jump over, what you can do is you can invoke a Power BI REST method if there's not an actual Power BI commandlet that does that specific action. And so in the case of the data set refresh, we could get that URL and just run it as part of invoke the Power BI REST method, have that as a PowerShell command, and my ETL process can just trigger that PowerShell commandlet to execute and go on from there. So it's great. All right, let's take a look at this from an admin perspective and then we'll come back to PowerShell. One thing that admins may want to do is catalog their items with inside of Power BI. So this is cataloging everything that's in the Power BI tenant. One of the problems that you may hit, and actually I was working with someone that did hit this problem, where they were trying to catalog items and they bumped up against uh, API throttle. So you can only execute so many API requests within, I think it's an hour, I'm pretty sure it's an hour. And so it's around 200. And so think about this, I want to catalog every workspace, and then for each workspace, I want to catalog all the dashboards, reports, and data sets, and maybe users inside of it. So right away, that's like, what, five API calls that I got to go make? And that could be a problem, especially if I have a large amount of workspaces that adds up very quickly. So there's some parameters on this given function, which is get groups as admin, and one of those is expand. So let's take a look at what expand does. We're going to go and try. So we're going to say... All right, we're gonna say top, we'll say 5,000. And then we'll say dollar sign expand. Then we'll do a value. And we'll see our URL. So what this is gonna do is I'm saying get the top 5,000 workspaces in my tenant. And then as part of that request that comes back for the workspaces, I wanna expand out the users the dashboards, the reports, and the data sets. So one call, I get all of it, which is great. So let's go and run that. And bam, look at that. I got everything in here, right? So that's everything from a JSON perspective, all of my dashboards, my data sets. We can see here's a, uh, here's a given workspace and they've got no users, but here's all the items that are inside of it. So good. So now let's do this from a PowerShell perspective. So the beauty of this is I'm gonna copy this URL come over to my PowerShell command. One of the problems with the invoke Power BI REST method was the, the questions I got were like, I don't know what the URL should be or how to format it properly. I just copied it from the try it so I can try it in a given space and then bring that URL over and paste it in. So here, let's do this. So we'll just paste that URL in. Bam, there it is. It's already formatted properly. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and run this. Yep. And so the first thing it's gonna do is log into Power BI. Go ahead and do that. And then it goes and gets all that content and I'm saying just give me the first element that's inside of there and there it is. So there's no users on this given workspace but here's all the reports, the dashboards, and the data sets. It's amazing, it's easy to run. And then I can save that out and then I can operationalize it as needed. And so what if you have more than 5,000 workspaces? Well, there you can do, there's a skip property as well or a skip parameter where I could say, hey, skip the first 5,000 and go get the 5,000 after that. So if you have 50,000 workspaces, which is a lot, then you can go ahead and cycle through those. Lots of options that you have from the REST API perspective. I'll have links down in the description below to list out the actual REST API reference as well as the PowerShell commandlet reference. And if you want this specific PowerShell command that I just ran, Go and get that down. There's a link down in the description below as well. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What do you guys think? Is this awesome? Is this powerful? Are you not a code person, but maybe this gives you a little confidence to actually try using some of those REST APIs and or PowerShell? Go and let me know down in the comments below. I wanna hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video. Yo, no.